Hi guys, my name is Carola de la Fuente and I'm the brand ambassador of Miolo. Maybe some of you already know me. What we try to organize today is a masterclass with three emblematic labels from our portfolio that you can do not only a masterclass and a trip, an educational trip about Brazil or wines of Brazil and either wines from us, of course, but also do a kind of special dinner maybe for your family or either this weekend that weather now start to be a little bit more warm you can organize three different steps for test this wine either matching with some of the dishes that i would recommend okay so but before to start to explain the wines i will open the sparkling so you can relax with sparkling by the way what you are listening in the back is bossa nova Okay, you know, Bossa Nova is one of the uh, most famous moments of music in Brazil worldwide. And it's a kind of jazz, samba, mixing, and it's brilliant and more for relax. Okay, so first of all, I will open the Miolo Uwe Brut. Okay, I will open with you the sparkling so we can do this a little bit more dynamic. And either if I make mistake, you can laugh in at home. So, yeah. right. Woo! Okay, so remember, guys, because the sparklings have a lot of pressions, okay, you need to be careful when you open a sparkling, okay? So, try to put your hand up, okay? Rolling. Um, the the closer, <laughs> sorry, and then keep going, keep taking with your hand the sparkling. Move the cork for one way and the bottle to other way. Far from your eyes, please. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <sighs> Voila. Okay. So you open gently. You open slowly, but you don't have accidents and also or the magic of the bubbles keep in the bottom okay so first bubbles okay <laughs> okay what is this what is this sparkling Miolo Cuebrot is probably one of the sparklings more famous that we have in our portfolio okay by the way I organize I sent before a receipt. Okay, this is a receipt very simple to find in BBC um, uh, Good Food. Okay, and it's called it's a Brazilian cheese bread called Pan de Queijo. Okay, it's very easy to do it. You just need to have some butter, salt, cheese, special like hard cheese, like Parmesan cheese. Um, some um, milk but essentially and this is the most important thing that you need to find and it's not complicated to find in UK is tapioca flour okay so try to buy tapioca flour in one of your more uh, famous shops of organic products or natural products or worldwide products I used to buy tapioca flour from Amazon which is the easy way but you can find also in Planet Organic Whole Food I'm just thinking places online um, or, or either this kind of international uh, mini market or market square in your town. So it's very easy. OK, so don't, don't worry, it's not complicated to do it. OK. And it's a really nice snack for you relax with the sparkling. This is one Brazilian idea, but you, by the way, could just take hummus. OK some um, just uh, carrots and some uh, other things that you used to have with your hummus and just relaxing it's, it's not complexity that you need in the food for this sparkling okay because it's fresh it's, it's a very uh, nice spark delicate bubbles it's not aggressive you don't need a competition with the food you just need to something with good taste not too much fat okay 
not too much acidity and 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 very clean um, uh, taste okay so let, let's speak about the sparkling so this is sparkling is making 50% of Pinot Noir 50% of Chardonnay okay you will have approx six to seven grams of residual sugar uh, which do uh, a, a brut remember that when you have from zero from well from zero no from from five to fifteen grams of sugar residual which is more or less the normal things you will have a, a brut okay extra brut is less of five grams of sugar so it's a little bit more dry in your mouth and then nature is is just different it's a completely different product so no dosage um and then more than 15 grams of sugar you start to have a uh, sec demi sex uh, and, and all this other group of products but in this case you have a very mild um sparkly <laughs> remember it's also it's not named champagne because we are in brazil so we, we don't have a proper denomination for sparklies in brazil um we call just sparkling wine, okay? O espumante, o espumoso. Um, okay, so let's let's taste. First of all, it's very clear. You can see the bubbles still. I don't know if you see the bubbles there. It's very delicate, so. Very yummy. <laughs> So you will feel fruit. You have a little bit of green apples, which is a very good signal. Um, but you also have some apricots. Um, and then your tongue is moved. So the test is go in the middle, but also opening your tongue a little bit in the back and the bubbles are just really little crispy okay so it's not it's a it's a sparkling that not makes you feel like you have a big soda in your mouth you know so it's super explosion so it's really nice i will do it yummy <laughs> okay again 50 percent chardonnay 50 percent pinot noir Second fermentation in the bottle, first fermentation in steel tank, six to seven grams of residual sugar, and between 12 and maybe sometime 14 months in the lease. Okay, so you will have this note of the second fermentation, like the brioche, like the butter, um, but it's not, it's not more present than the fruit. Okay, so you have a very good balance. And something that you need to know, we in Mulo are the largest producer of sparkling in all South America. Okay, so we are really a strong doing sparkling wines. <laughs> okay, I will move the sparkling. Okay, but you can keep bringing the sparkling. It means I might explain you some things because I love maps. Okay, so where we are. Okay, so this is America. In total, all oh, North America, Central America, South America. Okay, and we are ubiquitous in the South. Okay, everyone knows about Brazil, so probably you was clear with this. So we're in the South. Okay, so we are in the Atlantic Ocean, basically. Okay, most is is one of the largest countries in the world, as you can see. It's huge. We have a lot of countries that are bordered with us, basically most of the countries in South America. And we are the only country in South America that speak Portuguese. Okay, we don't speak Spanish. <laughs> Our capital used to be Rio de Janeiro many years ago, but then changed to Brasilia. Okay. But where we are speaking about vineyards. So the easy way for me for explain things is going close to Uruguay. Okay, because some people already test Uruguayan wines. Okay, if you want to be close of Uruguay for see, we are really in the border. So we can see that more or less we have really similar terroirs in the south area of Brazil, where are 
happening most of our wines, okay? But now I will show you a map of Brazil. So speaking about Brazil, okay, the most popular vineyards are in the south area. And most of these vineyards, historically, was founded for Italian people. We also have some German people around, etc. But it's Italian people, the strong, strong culture around the wine in the south area. Of course, Portuguese as well. So if you can see, we have uh, this area that is called um, Campania, okay, which is a really border with Uruguay. And we have in Campania, we have divides between Campania Central and Campania Meridional. The sparklings that you are testing now are coming from the heart of our vineyard for us, Miolo, and one of the one of the oldest regions for wine in Brazil, which is not the older one, but is one of the oldest ones, okay? And this region is, is here. Woo, se me perdió. So this region is here, is, is in Rio Grande do Sur, and is, um, is very close to Porto Alegre, okay? Like it's one of the cities more famous, and no, it's not close of the sea, okay? <laughs> so it's a really, Bali, in some way, is extremely similar to Tuscany for you have in your mind. So I know it's difficult to understand that Tuscany in Brazil, but yes, it is, okay? <laughs> so the altitudes of, of the vineyards will change between, um, between 300 meters, 400 meters, um, 200 meters, so we are not really high altitude, okay? We don't have mountains of high altitude, speaking about other countries in South America, like Argentina or Chile. We speak here more um, about different kinds of soils. We have a, a, a higher humidity, or amplitude thermic is big as well, so we have very cold nights, for example, in Campania, and during the days we can have warm days and either winters, very cold winters and very warm summers. So everything is much more dramatic. Um, but again, uh, we harvest once once uh, a, a year, all speaking about South area. Later I will sp explain you <laughs> about other vineyards in the north of Brazil, okay? The latitude, we are speaking about latitude 29. So having your mind, South America, famous vineyards in South America are in latitude 33. Okay, so this is Mendoza, Maipo, okay, more or less. 29, we are speaking about like north of Argentina, okay, Bolivia, Paraguay, Uruguay, so there, okay. So we're still speaking about being more close of the Ecuador, means for us in South America, north means hot. Okay, this means it's a little bit more warm. Okay, but I will move to the next wine. Okay, So the next wine we will test is a white wine, okay? And for the white wine, what I did, we, we choose, was Ali, Alicios, okay? Alicios is a blend very interesting because it's Pinot Grigio Riesling, okay? And here what we do is a blend of two areas, basically. So let me open. This is crew cup also, very convenient for picnics. Okay. We are very proud to say that in Campania, where is the really south of Brazil, okay, border with Uruguay, 
we have a fantastic and very particular Riesling, so different to Rieslings in Europe. Okay, so all Rieslings, nothing to do with a German Riesling or maybe with a French Riesling. This is something different in the good way. And either the Pinot Grillo or Pinot Grillo, if you want to associate with the Italian Pinot Grillo, probably will taste to you different because have more tropical fruits in like like papayas, for example, okay? So you will have this perfume in the notes that mix extremely well with the Riesling for this kind of lemony acidity, okay? Let's test. Yeah. It's, it's papaya in the first sense. It's beautiful because it's also delicate. So it's not papaya like, like you punching with a perfume very strong. It's something that just moves slowly, okay? With these citrons around, okay? Um, citrus, no citrus. <laughs> Guys, hope you are testing with me the wine because so nice, so nice. The kind of acidity I have, clean your palate, straight on, either with no necessity of oak, it's, it's freshness, it's pure freshness. Let me, I find also a recipe for this. Also in BBC, good show, good food, no good show, okay? And this recipe is pastel de palmito, okay? Basically, what you need here is like um, a Doubt, you need to do it by yourself because it's a little bit um, lighter than the doubts that you have in the supermarket. And it's also funny because it's very funny to, you know, stress doubt and okay, it's not bread, it's this. <laughs> and this for the filling, you will need just um, uh, garlic, tomato, uh, onions. Um, you will need also palmitos. You can buy herd palmitos in any supermarket. So it's in all the supermarkets, basically. And you also will need a little bit of cream cheese, okay? That that makes this kind of more smooth test uh, when you eat, okay? And then as you can see, you fry them, okay? So the oil that you will have from the pastel will clean super well with the acidity that you have with this wine, okay? This is 50% Pinot Grigio, 50% Riesling. Both grapes coming from Campania, but one is Campania Central and the other is Meridional. We have a cold skin contact here because our acidity is natural, okay? Because the reason I explained to you in winter is really cold. Uh, but also is for preserve this this freshness. The skin help a lot um, to keep this acidity present then in, in, in the wine. Okay, so it's keep opening. It's delicious. Okay, I will need with I I will drink a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one second. I will move this here. Okay. Let me know, guys, that you already are enjoyed, no? So we move to a completely different things because what I find is most of people here in South America, in, sorry, in UK, now, um, and for very good reason, South America, because wines from Argentina, wines from Chile, that they are present in the market for um, maybe the last 20, 30 years. But for Brazil and either for Uruguay, for us, it's a little bit more complicated. Also, is, is, and this is the second reason, is because the most of the production of wine that we do in Brazil is for domestic consumption. Okay, and with this amount, with 
percentage is I'm telling like 80%, 85% is all for domestic market. And we are really strong in sparklings. So we are testing now one sparkling, but we have uh, in our portfolio approximately 12 sparklings in Brazil. Okay, In UK right now we have four different sparklings. Um, we have a sparkling that is called Saibal, which is a very um, charmat, more similar in your mind, maybe like a Prosecco style. And then we have the Cuvée Brut that you, you, you are testing now. <laughs> and then we have the Brut Rosé, so so in the same range, um, but with more preponderance of the Pinot Noir. And also we have a uh, um, other stash of uh, sparkling we call uh, Mille Cime, okay? And in Mille Cime, what we do is choose the grapes, the best years for do this sparkling. And right now in UK, you can find 2012. Uh, in Brazil, we are moving to 2015. And we are very proud about this sparkling because it's also, it's another chapter, uh, but in the good way. And also it's a very affordable sparkling in case you want to test it in some moments, okay? In Alicios, which is the wine that you tested, okay? We have a white and we have a red, okay, in UK. So we have the Pinat Grigio uh, Riesling, I forget to say 12% of alcohol, okay? Very dry as well, so sugar is, is really low, it's like three, four grams. Um, no oak, I also didn't tell that. <laughs> okay, so after the fermentation alcoholic that is making steel tank, we just have the normal time of, 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 of production, and then that will be 15 days, uh, three weeks and then um, and then we just uh, um, filter okay and then move to bottling so no no contact at all with with uh, oak okay and this wine is also uh, coming in uh, red version which is Turiga Nacional and Tempranillo. Turiga Nacional is a it's a great variety that we are very proud to, to promote as coming originally coming from, from Portugal. And um, Brazil is one of the only countries that produce the grape variety in South America. Um, so let's move to the next one. So our last wine is a red, okay? And it's Family Vineyards Pinot Noir. I love this wine. And I choose one recipe for this wine in the same way that the other ones. So like, you know, like snacky things. And this is a sweet one, okay? So this is okay, Brigadeiro, okay? So they are fra Brazilian chocolate truffles, okay? And here, the key element is uh, sweetened condensed milk. So what we do is, is like a truffle that is making with basically cocoa, but better if it's, um, it's, a, it's a dark cocoa, uh, unsugary, better. Um, the, the, the condensed milk. And then we cover, okay, with pistache, or we can cover with almonds, with coconut. With coconut is delicious. Um, and yeah, we move for this way. So you also can use um, uh, Brazilian nuts or, or caju nuts, which are very popular in Brazil as well. And why I choose this? So we will introduce, here we will start to have oak. 
okay? And I've been on noir so different, so different. Let me open first. Okay. I want you to, you to see the color. Okay. It's a very delicate color. It's very... You can see? So, Pinot Noir, you probably have a long history testing Pinot Noirs because if you are close to Burgundy, if you are close to New Zealand, if you are close to um, other French uh, Pinot Noirs as well, or German Pinot Noir, or um, Pinot Noir from Otago, from from US, or from Napa, or um, either from South America, Pinot Noir from Chile, uh, some Pinot Noir from Argentina. Well, Pinot Noir in general have the particularity that have a very delicate skin. So it's, it's super sensible to the terroir and it's very difficult to manage, okay? So you need to have, you need to produce this wine in places where you can have a, a weather that support to you. So, um, it's not the same that if you produce, for example, I will put example from South America, like you produce Mal Malbecs because the skin is very strong and you have a lot of defense in, in itself in the skin, um, protection for the grape. Um, the Pinot Noir is, is not like this, but for this reason, uh, it's like, a, it's so sensible to the terroir. So it's very easy to, to feel this kind of, um, flowers elements or chemical components that create the flowers uh, perfume so rose is very close to to pinot noirs um, also um, some cherries is, is an old typical of pinot noir um, and in places where it's more hot and it's more sunny you will feel also more smoky notes so sometimes you have this kind of more shark notes in the back, like, um, but what happened here? You here have, you here have like a cherries. So imagine like, like fair harvest cherries, which have higher acidity. So you feel freshness, but you also feel this kind of like a jelly. Like, um, okay, so it's, it's, you have flowers, you have rose, but you have a little bit peonies as well. So delicate, so delicate. And in the mouth, acidity is in your tongues. So clean your mouth. That you have in the top this kind of note of alcohol that clean well the mouth as well and the tannins are not invasive at all you you don't feel harsh at all at all super delicate super easy to drink super danger <laughs> so imagine finish your master class with this chocolate this music and this <laughs> Chin chin guys, um, I'm forgetting something. Okay, the music music moved me. Um, fermentation, steel tank. Uh, the Pinot Noir coming uh, from the, the south area. Um, oak, we are speaking about six to eight months in oak, just a little bit, okay? So again, it's one of the best options for finish your your testing today it's a very good option for you to understand our wines and i hope it's a really good opportunity for you to take off this idea sometimes that in south america or in brazil wines could be a little bit more bold and big uh, because the delicate and the city of these wines well hope hope change your mind about few things okay 
Thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was not too long. It's just 30 minutes of your life. Please do the receipts. If you do the receipt, uh, please send to us pictures. Um, I would love to see what you do. Um, and yeah, hope to see you face to face in person soon. Okay, bye.